This film is about damp in older buildings with traditionally constructed solid walls. While some of the advice in this film can apply to all building types, for newer buildings with cavity walls, see our fifth film, Flood, Rain and Damp in Newer Buildings. Every building is unique, so this film can only provide general guidance. More ways to get specific advice are available on the Cumbria Action for Sustainability website. Nobody likes a damp home, but there are benefits to improving the weather resilience of your home beyond the aesthetic appearance and preventing unnecessary damage to the plaster and stonework. A drier home is also a healthier home, minimising the risk of conditions that can lead to mould growth and timber decay. A drier home will also be a warmer home, as wet walls lose heat quicker than dry walls. It will also require less energy to heat, reducing your costs and carbon emissions. Excessive moisture or damp can affect your home in a number of ways. Penetrating damp through the walls or roof the upward movement of moisture from the ground and condensation on the internal face of the walls, windows and floors. Each has a different cause, so it is important to diagnose the problem correctly. Penetrating damp can be caused by a number of reasons. A leaking or blocked gutter or downpipe, gaps in the roof, faults with the chimney, failed mortar joints, or the use of inappropriate, impermeable materials. The upward movement of moisture from the ground is only likely to affect the walls at low level, but may also impact on the floor finish. It is usually as a result of excessive ground moisture as a result of plumbing or drainage leaks or high external ground levels. Excessive condensation usually occurs on colder surfaces, often with a build-up of mould growth over time. It also occurs in areas of high moisture vapour, such as bathrooms and kitchens. Our first film explained the key differences between more modern cavity wall buildings and traditionally constructed buildings, and why it is important that they are treated differently, particularly when it comes to dealing with rain and moisture. Traditional solid walls breathe, allowing moisture absorbed by the fabric to evaporate, aided by the warmth of the sunshine and wind and heating and ventilation internally. In addition, traditional buildings usually don't have damp-proof courses, as they are unnecessary as the use of vapour permeable materials enables the upward movement of moisture from the ground to naturally evaporate. The use of incompatible, more recent replacements could impact on this process, leading to the build-up of dampness within the walls. This includes commonly used materials such as hard, impermeable cement-based pointing or renders externally, or cement plasters and modern paints internally, preventing the building from being able to breathe. The importance of maintaining the breathability of the walls also applies when considering improving energy efficiency, and is discussed in more detail in the next film, Improving Energy Efficiency in Traditional Buildings. In addition to using compatible materials, routine building maintenance is the first line of defence preventing the build-up of excessive damp in the building fabric. Small measures to maintain your home can prevent larger problems occurring in the future. A stitch in time. Firstly check your rainwater goods are working well. Clear blocked gutters and downpipes and fix leaks as drips and overflows can quickly and easily be absorbed into the fabric and lead to problems with damp. Ideally, check rainwater goods are cleared after heavy leaf fall, most importantly in the autumn and preferably again in the spring. This should also include checking the condition of underground drainage, which may be blocked or even broken as a result of tree roots or construction work. At the same time, it is a good idea to have a look around the rest of the building to check for any issues or areas where water may be getting in and creating damp problems internally. Look for slipped or broken slates on the roof as well as lead flashings at the abutment with the chimneys. Also check the condition of the chimney head. Does it have a pot or a cowl? And are there cracks or breaks in the mortar bedding? 
Damp can also be caused by a chimney being blocked with no ventilation at the top and the bottom. Solid, traditional walls rely on the ability of the moisture to evaporate from the wall. Most of this takes place through the lime mortar pointing rather than the stone or the brick, as the lime mortar is more porous than the masonry. Cement mortar, by contrast, is non-porous, so it is important to repair the pointing using lime-based mortars to maintain this process. Also, whilst traditional renders were lime-based, your home may have a harder, more modern cement render. If so, it's important to check for cracks, as these can allow water to get behind, trapping it inside the wall. The removal of cementitious render can, though, be costly and damage the fabric underneath. Experienced professional conservation advice should be sought if you wish to undertake this type of work. Check for gaps around doors and windows as well. As well as allowing driving rain in, they can also create drafts and increased heat loss and possible cold bridges leading to condensation and mould growth. If you have problems with damp at low level, check that the gullies serving the downpipes are working and that the water is freely running away. Also check the height of the external ground levels in relation to the internal floor levels, as this could also be a cause of damp at low level. Where it is safe, external ground levels can be lowered, or alternatively introducing ground drains to direct the water away from the building can also be effective but these will need to be maintained to stop them silting up. Dampness on the wall may not always be from rain getting in, but could be caused by condensation. If there is evidence of mould growth, it is likely to be as a result of moisture vapour condensing on a cold wall, door, floor or window. This is why you more often see it in bathrooms and kitchens with high levels of moisture vapour or colder rooms with little or no ventilation. Allowing the moisture vapour to escape is key to dealing with condensation, which is why mechanical extract fans are required in bathrooms and kitchens. Opening windows for a period of time or leaving them ajar or on the latch will have the same effect. Ventilation is also key to keeping your home dry. This does not though mean a howling gale, but controllable ventilation to provide good air quality and prevent the build-up of moisture and reduce mould growth. In summary, dealing with damp in traditional buildings requires regular routine maintenance of all elements of the building fabric, as well as an understanding of how older buildings manage moisture, enabling you to diagnose any problems that may arise.